Diesel, what are you doing now? Surprised to see me? I'm still on the case, looking for safety that will bring every professional driver home safely after every trip. Now that I've mastered the pre-trip... Hold on to your trench coat, Diesel. We only got through the first three steps of the seven-step pre-trip inspection in part one. Hey, I know this pre-trip inspection is serious business. That's why I'm here, to finish the last four steps. Moving right along. We've approached the vehicle and looked for leaning, leaks, and things dragging. That's step one, the overall picture. Step two... Uh, that would be check under the hood. Right again, Diesel. In step two, you checked fluid levels, looked for leaks, and went over the front braking system, the steering system, suspension, and the cooling system, as well as all electrical connections, making sure wires aren't worn or frayed. Hey, you really are getting the hang of this. Step three, inside the cab. I'll take this one. Is all about checking inside the cab. We checked our gauges, horn, mirrors, windshield. I think you're understanding this. You're ready to go with step four. Okay, let's discuss step four. Step four, the headlights, takes us out of the cab to look at the front of the rig. Front and center, boss. We're going to check the low beams to make sure they work, and we'll check the high beams. We'll also check the exterior side mirrors for cracks, make sure they're adjusted for full vision, and we'll wipe and clean them if they're dirty. Just a little spit and polish here, right? No, Diesel. A clean, damp rag and cleaning solution works well here. That takes us right into step five, the walk around, which is where we walk around the tractor trailer. We'll begin at the left side of the cab. That would be the driver's side. Am I right? Yeah, Diesel, you're right. Just start at the left side of the cab. Move across the front and down the right side of the tractor and then the trailer. As you walk around the rig and inspect, Take a few seconds to clean your clearance lights and reflectors. Take a good look at your wheels. Examine them for cracks or damage. Check your tires for cuts, bruises, proper inflation, and proper tread depth. Test lug nuts and look for cracks and rust streaks, a sure sign of looseness. Make sure your hub oil levels are good and there are no signs of leaks there either. So how long until I finally make it back around to the driver's side of the cab? This is a lot of work. A thorough pre-trip inspection is a must to ensure your safety. You must be absolutely positive your rig is in good shape and doesn't need any repairs. But what if it does need repairing? Then what? Never ever leave the yard if there's a question about anything, and I mean anything that requires a safety repair. And remember to sign off on the post-trip vehicle condition report. Got it. You're not leaving any wiggle room here, are you? None. It's a matter of staying safe on the road, in the city, or on the highway. That makes it quite important. Right. While this is not a federal requirement, many companies and owner-operators look at everything while walking around the rig. Suspension, brakes and brake chambers, structure, batteries, lights, reflectors, and turn signals, everything. We're also inspecting the drive shaft, glad hands, wet and dry tanks, coupling system, and exhaust system. Make sure all locks are secure and in working order. Got it. Here's a tip. Anytime you're inspecting the coupling system or anything under the truck, even tires, make sure you take the keys out of the ignition and put them in your pocket. That'll keep some helpful person from running over you while you're doing your inspection. Hey, what are you doing now? Signaling. Didn't you want to check my signals? Diesel, we're talking about signal lights. And that's step six, the signals. Go back to the cab, turn off all lights, and then one at a time, check the turn signals, four ways and the stoplights on the tractor and the trailer. Of course, you'll need to walk around the trailer to accomplish this step as you check each set of signals. Walk around the trailer. Of course, so that brings us to step seven. Let me guess. Uh, no, Diesel. Let me tell you. It'll save us time. Step seven is all about the air brake system. 
but it's also the time to get back to the cab, turn off the lights, and make certain all loose articles are secured. Additionally, make sure you have all your required trip documentation, required permits, trip manifests, your CDL, and Department of Transportation medical card. All right, here comes the red tape. Are we driving trucks or filling out paperwork here? I'm confused. Diesel, you're easily confused. But as professional drivers know, documentation is extremely important, particularly if you have to pull over for a roadside inspection or if there's an accident. Okay, well, now that you put it that way, uh, I get it. Diesel, pick up that trash. Let's move on, we're almost done. Check the air brake system. Begin by starting the engine and build the air pressure to 90 PSI. We're now going to check the low pressure alarm or light. To do this, turn off the engine, quickly apply and release the brake pedal. When you get to 60 pounds, your low pressure alarm or light should kick in. And if it doesn't? It's something your maintenance people need to check to determine if it's working properly. Man, this is hard work! And professional drivers have to remember all this? Professional drivers know all of this. And they not only protect themselves, but other drivers on the highway when they can perform a thorough pre-trip. Next, we look at the tractor protection valve. And here's what we're looking for. Emergency brakes should activate at between 20 pounds and 45 pounds pressure. When they're applied, the trailer brakes should lock. If they don't, have maintenance check them out. Between 20 pounds and a maximum of 45 pounds. Check. In dual air systems with the engine at a normal operating RPM, pressure should build from 85 to 100 PSI in 45 seconds. If your tanks are larger than normal, it should take slightly longer. If your engine is idling from 600 to 900 RPM maximum, pressure should build from 50 to 90 PSI within a few minutes. By the way, PSI, is that like CSI? I remember one case where the victim was really... Diesel, PSI means pounds per square inch, and it's how you measure air pressure. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, uh, I, I knew that. Uh, just testing. Uh, so tell me, how many inches are in a square pound? I'm just going to ignore that. Next, we check out two other brakes, the parking brake and trailer handbrake. Next, check to see if the fifth wheel is firmly connected. Then, see if the kingpin's locking jaws are firmly locking. If not, have maintenance check it out before starting your trip. Not that kind of jaws. I'm talking about the kingpin on your fifth wheel. Just kidding. Hey, chill out. You're too serious, man. Well, the pre-trip inspection is serious, Diesel. It's all about safety and preventing accidents. So here's the next to the last part of step seven. Check out your service brakes. Get your rig moving several miles an hour and then apply your service brakes. If your rig pulls to the right or left, you need to have a mechanic look at those brakes right away. Never drive a rig if you have even the slightest question about the rig's safety. Step seven ends with something to keep us on the right side of the law. And it should be a habit if it's not already both when you get into your personal vehicle and when you climb into a big rig, whether you're a city driver or over the road. Can you guess? Check your hair in the rear vision mirror. Check to see if you have any spinach between your teeth. Hmm, no, I guess I don't know where you're going with this one. Step seven's final step is fasten your safety belt. Oh, you mean be ready, be buckled. Yeah, I knew that, just forgot. Well, don't forget to conduct a thorough pre-trip inspection, buckle up, and of course, drive safely. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Be safe, be professional, and get home safely after every trip. Diesel, there may be hope for you yet. The pre-trip and post-trip are vehicle inspections, and you can find a checklist of items to be inspected either in your logbook or from your safety department. The post-trip VCR must list all vehicle defects. Any safety defects must be repaired and the technician making the repairs must sign off that the safety malfunctions have been repaired. This must occur before the unit can be placed in service. The VCR report must also be maintained by the company for 90 days. 